Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Lent. is Psalm 119. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees. For all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips will pour forth praise, because you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your promise, for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you. And let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Let us pray. Gracious God, seeker of the lost, draw us, your children, back to your loving embrace. Restore us to our inheritance as sons and daughters and reconcile our hearts to you. By your Holy Spirit, open our minds and bodies to the recreating power of your word, that we may see the world through the mind of Christ and live in the world as a foretaste of your new creation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. entire chapter of chapter 15. So if you would like to stand, it's a long reading, you may stand. If not, um, you can be in a posture of receiving the gospel, God's word. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin I lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatty calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. 
for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come home and your father has killed the fatty calf because he has gotten him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oftentimes, the lectionary will split these parables up. And like I said a previous Sunday, I think we see something different when we read this all together. I certainly did. Now, it's important like always, to look at the context. Luke writes his gospel to Gentiles, so newcomers to the faith. But Luke is himself an Israelite, a Jew, what we would call a Jew. So he's explaining these stories, these parables of Jesus, to the Gentiles in the context of the Israelites' worship, the Jewish church. Verses 1 and 2 begin with, Now all the tax collectors and the sinners are coming around to listen to Jesus' teaching. So Jesus is being surrounded by these tax collectors and sinners, people whom the, the Israelites would not usually associate with, much less would want their leader to be associating with. Verse 2 tells us the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Can you believe it? So Luke tells us, the Pharisees and the scribes the, the leaders of the Jewish church are upset with Jesus. It's kind of a first century us versus them. So then we go on into the first parable, the, the first two parables actually, you know, we always think that these parables are about repentance and they are, but we, we neglect to see that when we read it, read all three of them together, we see that the first two are fairly different than the third. The first two, somebody goes out and seeks for the lost. They seek until they find the lost. We have 100 sheep and and either the shepherd or the sheep owner notices he has counted those 100 as they come into the sheepfold, and he only got 99. So he leaves the 99, goes and hunts until he finds the lost one. Now the sheep doesn't turn back and look for the other 99. When he is found, the sheep doesn't um, begin to speak and say, oh, I'm so sorry, shepherd. I'm so sorry you had to come find me. Sorry for being lost. He's simply found because the shepherd seeks 
until he is found. The same with the coins and the woman who has 10 coins. I mean, if you have a pocket of coins and you drop one, that coin is not gonna jump back up into your pocket and say, I'm sorry, I got lost. I'm sorry, I got separated. You have got to search like the woman. Seek that coin until you find it. And she takes all kinds of measures. She gets lights, a lamp, sweeps the house and searches carefully until she finds it. And then the third parable is a little different because the youngest son, he does turn back and he does say, I'm sorry. He does repent. So repentance cannot happen unless God seeks us. That is the first action of repentance, that our God is a God who seeks us out, who seeks each and every one of us out. First and foremost, it is God's action that happens in repentance. And because God seeks us, we are able to turn back and repent. And God celebrates. He celebrates when this happens. Because, you see, the sheep, the 100 sheep are a whole. If the shepherd only counts 99, they're not a whole anymore. They're just 99 sheep. The 10 coins are a whole. If the woman only has nine, she doesn't have her complete whole. The man with two sons, his family is not complete without both of them. <coughs> now, if we look at this chapter in a modern setting, as if Luke were writing his gospel in this lovely year of 2021, the Pharisees and the scribes would be the leaders of the church, would be the pastors, would be you guys that are here today, the regular churchgoers, the us. The tax collectors and the sinners would be, well, sinners pretty much translates throughout the ages, doesn't it? So it'd be the sinners, those we think are sinners, the homeless, the addicts, them. We are the 99 sheep. We are the nine coins. And we are the elder son that does everything right. That stays faithful to God. That stays at home and does what is asked of us. But we're not complete. Something else that I noticed in reading this whole chapter together is the elder sons, if we relate ourselves to the elder son who stayed home and worked, he says slaved for his father, that never got even a goat. When the father seeks him out and wants him to come to the party as well, because remember, his family is not complete without both sons. The elder son answers, listen, all these years I've been working like a slave. I've never disobeyed your command. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your money with all kinds of sinful living, 
you kill the fatted calf for him. <coughs> Listen to the father's reply. He turns it back on the son and says, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours, and it always has been and always will be, right? But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was lost and now he's come home. You see, as the 99 sheep, there is one brother or sister out there that is lost. Brother or sister of ours. We are not complete without the entirety of God's children. God is a God who seeks us out but he seeks each and every one of us. And that includes the them, the tax collectors and the sinners, the people who are lost, who we may think have squandered the Father's love. That's our brother or our sister and we are not complete without him, amen. give you a moment now to type in any joys or concerns that you would like to share and have lifted up by your family here at Notre Dame School.
to um, share concerns or joys in pen. And that goes for you as well on Facebook if you would like to type in the comments um, any joys or concerns that you would like to share. So are there any? Remember Mike Roberts again. Uh, I know you have been, but uh, he's been so sincere. I feel I talked to Darlene this morning. She said he's doing fairly well. Uh, if you have a seizure, if they have a seizure. Oh, okay. In jo at Johnson City. And Mike is doing good. Yeah, thank you all for your prayers for him, for me, for all our, our vast clowns. He's looking in the mirror. I think they'd rather get him in the cell still, but yeah. they don't have to do that. Thank you. And Gil and Rhett are good. How's Mama and the babies? I spoke with Jeffrey Fields earlier this week. Um, he would ask for your continued prayers, um, as well as Brenda Lawson's mother, Emma Jean Hopkins. Um, they're still doing tests on her heart, but she is having some issues with her heart. So, uh, my brother's still working. Uh huh. So if anybody wants to read to me, I'm, I'm open. So <laughs> give me a call and choose some scripture. Thank you, God. Yes. <laughs> Do what? Thank you, God. Yeah. And Aaron. And Aaron, yes. Yes. Excellent yes. yes. job. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of grace, hear our prayers for your church your world, and all those whom we love. Have mercy, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. We pray for those who have dealt with loss over this past year, whether it be loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, loss of health. Be their refuge and send your people to comfort and aid them. We pray for those who are lost or lonely. Seek them out. Bring them home to safety and send your people to befriend them. We pray for those who suffer persecution and violence. Help them, heal them, and send your people to fight for justice and mercy. We pray for those who are poor and hungry Provide for them by your generous spirit and send your people to clothe and feed them. We pray for those who are dealing with loss, whether it be loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, or loss of health. Be their refuge and send your people to comfort and aid them. We pray for those who do not or cannot believe. Show them your grace and send your people to be Jesus in their midst. According to your abundant mercy, receive all these prayers and accomplish your purpose in us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as people of the new creation, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God during a time of offering. God, all that we have comes from you. Receive this offering and with it the offering of our lives, for we return to you only what you have generously given. Use us for the sake of Christ and your kingdom. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting the grace that promised to us in Jesus Christ, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have strayed from your ways. Like the prodigal son, we have wasted our inheritance. You gave us the earth for our home, but we squander earth's resources and hoard its bounty. You gave us neighbors to love. You gave us the commandments that lead to human flourishing but we break your law and forsake your love. Forgive us our sin and bring us to repentance. Draw our wandering hearts back to you, that we may find freedom in obedience to your love. Through Christ our Lord we pray. As a parent welcomes home a wayward child, so God embraces all who return in true repentance. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
God is a God who seeks his children. He seeks and he seeks and he seeks and until he finds them. But remember, when we are not the ones that are lost, we are still not complete. Because one of our brothers and sisters, one of our family in Christ, is still lost. So let us seek as God seeks. Let us seek the lost and bring them back to God. Bring them back to their Father so that we can rejoice with God when our brothers and sisters are found. Amen.